Uri Shacham joins us now to discuss the stress being placed on medical teams and first responders. He is the deputy director and chief of staff of Mogan David Adom, Israel's national emergency medical service. Uri, thank you so much for taking this time with us today. Um, I know that you are inundated with with requests for help. Um, here's what we know thus far. Israeli health officials have said that there have been 2,800 wounded since Saturday, 535 still hospitalized, 106 in serious or critical condition. What do you and your staff need most right now? Well, uh, we need to maintain our preparedness for any future development. It's very important to uh, remember that although now the war is raging in the southern part of Israel, Hezbollah has been firing rockets, mortar shells on the uh, northern border of uh, Israel. It is the duty of Magen David Adon to be prepared. So if anything will develop, we will uh, be there. We need medical supplies. We need uh, uh, radio uh, communication. We need more ambulances. And we need to make sure that if, God forbid, anything happens, our teams will be there exactly like they are for the people of the, uh, of the South. Right, so you've been reinforcing your teams in the southern part of Israel, as you point out, but given what could be developing with Hezbollah in the northern part, um, that is going to be your focus as well. Um, one of the things that I've been really moved by over the past few days, just as, as an outsider watching this unfold, is just how much of an intimate society Israel really is. I mean, the unity that I've witnessed in your country since Saturday has been both instant and profound. Just walk us through how Israelis are really rallying together to help some of the victims here, whether it's in terms of blood donations or beyond that. So um, when, when, when the war started, we knew that we needed blood. So we went publicly to the, uh, to the people of Israel and told them, listen, um, the, the, the wounded and uh, the injured persons need your blood. Would you come and donate? I have to tell you that the lines were huge, were huge. We managed in, in three days to collect more than 13,000, 13,000 blood uh, units in three days. And that's the amount that we usually uh, collect in, in, uh, in two weeks. Now, the people of Israel is providing food, uh, uh, groceries, warm and, and love to all of the emergency uh, uh, people, to the emergency workers, to our, to our uh, paramedics. And it shows that if something uh, happens in the state of Israel, once people are uh, feeling that there is a threat, they, are, they unite and they go and uh, work together for the sake of saving lives. Really just a country collectively uniting and reminiscent of what we saw here in New York in the aftermath, in the days after the 9-11 attacks, obviously many comparing what is happening in Israel uh, to 9-11. I'm at a loss for words, Uri, at so many details and news reports that we've seen over the past few days. And, and here is yet another one. Um, Israel's health ministry issued a request for doctors of all specialties to volunteer to issue burial certificates in the field. Can you just talk to us, just psychologically, what these past three days have meant for you and the shock that is still unfolding for, for so many of you and your trained colleagues who may have been trained for everything, but I don't know how you can be trained for what you have experienced these last 72 hours. Basically, you can. I've been serving in Magen David Adom, Israel's emergency um, uh, services system for 30 years. I have never encountered what, what uh, I saw in the last uh, three days. This is emotionally overwhelming. This is psychologically very, very uh, difficult. But I think that the dedication of our teams is what uh, moves us ahead. It gives us motivation. As, as I mentioned earlier, it unites us. I, I have to tell you about a paramedic of Magen David Adom that uh, was in one of the villages that was besieged by the Hamas terrorists. She went out of their ho uh, our home. She found out people that were wounded, and all she did is took care of them. She was shot dead by a Hamas terrorist. And when we found her, she was still wearing her gloves because up until her last minute, all she thought about 
is how to help other uh, and I think that the notion that in whatever you do you help somebody else you save a life of, of somebody you bring hope to other people this all this what moves us ahead in spite of all the uh, difficulties in in spite of the huge challenge that we are uh, experiencing and we will overcome my goodness, just hearing you, Uri, I'm just overcome with emotion. Just the fact that Hamas, not only, of course, targeting ordinary civilians, students, children, but, but people just doing their jobs, people trying to help, paramedics, ambulance workers. Um, I hope you know and you can feel that the whole of your country stands behind you, Uri. Um, thank you so much for the work that you're we, doing. We feel this, and if you want to support, and we need your support, mm -hmm. please go to uh, redstarforisrael.org, that's redstarforisrael.org. Thank you so much. We will over. Best of luck, Ori. Thank you.